I'm alive, I think. It's been a while since the last video. I kind of just left y'all hanging. I'm sorry, life happened. And I was just kind of done messing with that uh, scanner for a while. Also, did you see that guy's beard? It was just cut it off. And we're looking fresh, we're looking cut, mindful, very demure. <laughs> but some things have happened and we're gonna pick it back up. Uh, the software has gotten a lot better, still has some quirks but a viewer of mine has let me borrow his multi-axis turntable. And so that's what I'm going to be focusing on today because it's actually kind of good. Asterisk, kind of good, but it's here. I'm here. I'm back. Good to be back. Good to see you guys. Let's jump into it. All right. So the thing I noticed is that it's basically just that 45 degree arm with the scanner mount on it and then the rocker arm and then the turntable. And the turntable is only like this big. It's, let's get some measuring tools. It is exactly 90 millimeters. 90. Which isn't very big and you can't even use the entire space. Like the biggest thing that I was able to scan on that was about, 60 millimeters wide and that was that was pushing it so so you're not going to be scanning very big things with that but you know just perfectly average things you can only scan perfectly average things on there so that is one of the quirks of it but we will get into that later into the video and it does come with little sticky pads that you just stick right onto the scanning service peel off the protective layer and you stick your model to that because the whole arm rotates and if you have some mana and it rotates it's gonna fall off without that sticky pad on it so keep it on there all right now in the program i have the latest version running right now and it has gotten a lot of updates um specifically on how it handles noise filtering and uh, model processing and it's actually gotten pretty good i have gotten some stuff to align uh automatically which has been great and i have some stuff that won't align at all. So it still has those kind of issues, but overall it has gotten to a point where it's actually usable for me as a noob uh, with the scanner. So thanks for the much needed updates 30 Maker Pro. So I read the manual that it came with, um, basically just plug it in, put the little sticky pad on, hook your scanner onto the arm with a little screw, plug your normal scanner cable into the computer and the power as usual, and it is basically ready to go. Uh, you will need Bluetooth on your computer. So in the software, to get to the multi-axis turntable part, you have to go into the Easy Scan tab and then checkbox the multi-axis turntable. But just know that when you do that, you can't adjust any of the scanner settings. You have to uncheck that to reveal those settings again. So what I first do is I will uncheck color scanning because then I can actually see if my model brightness uh, or if my scan brightness is actually too bright or too dark. And I adjust it just under where the red starts to show up in that top right video area. And then I will up my sensitivity if it is a dark or black model. I have an S clip that you'll see later. And I definitely bumped up the sensitivity on that. Keep scan quality at fine. I don't do, I don't touch the slam mode. I don't really understand that yet. We'll get to that. But then you check that multi-axis turntable and you have turntable scan options that will show up. So in the multi-axis turntable section, you can see there's courses that it will take in various degrees. Now notice that the arm is fixed at a 45 degree angle and it's shooting at a flat table. That is actually zero degrees. The base 45 is zero and then you give it negative angles and positive angles um, from that 45 degrees. So if it's a zero, you're actually starting here. And if you give it like 30 degrees, it goes here ish. And then if you give it minus 30 degrees, it goes here ish. So I have gotten down to like 40 and 45 is the max, but then you start actually losing model tracking. So I usually keep it 40 at max. If I really have like a larger model with more detail, then I'll get down to that 45 so I can shoot up at the base of it a little bit. But I uh, have not had too much success with that. So keep it in that 30 to minus 30 range. And then what I did instead of doing just the zero, minus 30 and 30. And so I usually set it uh, every 10 degrees from 30 all the way down to negative 30. So you have your negative 30, negative 20, negative 10, zero, 10, 20, 30. And that usually gives me a lot of information to work with, except the first quirk of the scanner is that when you want to actually scan something, you actually have to go into easy scan, uh, turn on that checkbox for the multi-axis turntable. And then if it doesn't link, you actually have to click the link button and that'll usually start the homing process. If it doesn't, 
click off onto like table scan and then back to easy scan and you do that will trigger something and then you just let it go through its homing process it'll pivot pivot back it'll turn the turntable and then you gotta wait for that scan button to uh not be grayed out and then it'll be ready to scan and then you hit scan i have had quite a few times where even going through all the little like quirks of like jumping through tabs, unlinking, relinking, turning off, turning back on, jumping into edit mode and jumping to append or jumping back to easy mode. It'll still just not do anything when you hit scan. So you just have to cancel, delete the data and start it over again. All right, so that brings us to another quirk and that's the size of the things it can scan. It seems to have a very, very specific sweet spot of what it can scan. And remember that scanner only has like a little rectangle of view that it can actually scan. All right, so let's look at this model that I've scanned and you can see that the legs and a lot of the that inner part of it, it is close to the center of the turntable is losing some detail and has some really bad banding. Um, you can definitely tell on the top, you can tell on the legs and you can also see how high it scans up. So that model is not very tall at all. It's only like 60 millimeters tall and it, it completely loses the top of it. So what I found is something that is under 60 millimeters, like much closer to 50 is the max and stuff toward the center doesn't turn out right. But the weird thing is I have other models where the center is not banded at all. And so I don't know. I don't know if it was just those first couple of scans, but just be aware you might be getting some of that. The other thing to know is that your scanner can have a little bit of play when it's on that arm. And so you wanna align it to the two scanners on the side and not to the camera. And so if you look here at your preview, you can see where your scanner is actually looking and you can move your scanner left and right to actually center it. All right, so another quirk is banding, or at least that's what I'm gonna call it. Basically you see in this model, there's some like vertical streaks some like divot type things. And it's throughout pretty much all the models that I've scanned with this that are what I would consider successful. They all have this like streaking, banding, all vertical. And I would assume it's because it's like consistently turning that turntable very consistent. And so you aren't getting any kind of like scan overlap, especially if you have like a handheld motion, it kind of like overlaps everything and smooths things out. But if everything is the same, now you have scans that are like lining up like perfectly. So I think that's what's going on here. All right, so here's how to get better scans with this thing. So I found a video where a YouTuber went and actually checked out different sprays that you can put on a model and make it way easier to scan. And so instead of buying like an expensive scanning spray, you can actually use a spray powder for shoes and it works great. But just be aware that when it gets wet, it kind of glues itself to your model. So it's going to need a lot of scrubbing if you actually want it off. And I have kind of messed up a mini by spraying it all over the guy. And now it's just kind of part of the model. So be aware that if you're going to be scanning with that, even though it's cheap and it works, it's kind of working against you after the scanning happens. But I've found if I can't get a model to scan and I spray some of this stuff on it, it works beautifully. I try to avoid it if I can, but go ahead and use that at your discretion and <laughs> just know that it will work, but it will be hard to get off. Okay, so you can also see that it leaves fingerprints. So what I like to do is I'll put my models on a piece of paper, spray it, and then just slide the piece right off onto the tray. But with this one, you actually have to stick it down to the sticky pad. So you will leave fingerprints. Uh, when I'm doing it on my just regular turntable, it'll just slide it right off. Sometimes I'll just leave the paper on the turntable, spray everything and just leave it. And, it's, and it scans great. But yeah, you do have to stick the thing to the sticky pad and so that you leave fingerprints. And this is a 16 millimeter dice that I'm scanning and you can see that it scanned pretty good. But this is the smallest thing that I could scan successfully. But uh, you can see the banding showing up. You can see my fingerprints showing up, but it actually turned out pretty good. So getting to some of the gooder parts of the software actually processes things pretty well now. Um, I have tried messing with a lot of the advanced settings, but using just like the high setting on the default has usually turned out pretty good models. Like it does a lot of good noise cleanup. This is a lot of model cleanup and it still keeps a lot of detail and it's a noob that makes me happy. So <laughs> the less button clicking you have to do and figuring out, yes, Finally. Okay, so we're not gonna go into aligning models today of multi-scans just because it takes a lot of time to align stuff and I wanted to focus more on 
the quality of the scanning table itself and what it can do. So moving on. So some of the earlier models that I scanned uh, only did three angles of a turnaround. So I did the negative 30, the zero and the 30, which is default. Um, but in some of the later models that you'll see, which actually turned out pretty good, especially that, that S clip, I did like seven different angles all the way from minus 30 to positive 30 and then like two zeros just to make sure. All right, so now that we got that point cloud, we're gonna select the part that we want, reverse that selection, delete the table, make sure these four check boxes are clicked and then we're going to process. And so uh, when that happens, it'll save the project. And then once that other option comes up, check high and go for it. And whatever it spits out is usually pretty good. So as you can see uh, with these couple models, you'll see that it'll be clean, but it'll be banded. Some of the parts that have a lot of detail, you'll definitely see that banding come up. So the taller parts are the parts that get closer to the edge. You'll see that you'll start losing detail or pieces will just be clipped off because the scanner didn't reach that high. And I tried doing handheld stuff. Um, so you can see these two models, the two S clips, the handheld one, it captured more detail, but it was way more chewy. And that was with uh, processing it exactly the same. The only difference is the turntable versus handheld. So turntable definitely works for those, uh, those sweet spot small objects. And you can look at this model, this toothless one. This is uh, right off the turntable. I tried using a couple different advanced methods of cleaning it up, but that that default high, that that was the perfect one for this. You can see the ears are starting to clip out. You can see a uh, start of it. Uh, some of the wings are starting to get messed up. Um, so the closer you are to that center is getting a little iffy. The closer to the outside is a little iffy. It's that like sphere that encapsulates like the middle half of that plate that is the best so if you have anything in that area then it'll be good but this model turned out pretty good even the ears though they were clipped off that uh repair gaps uh smoothed in pretty good and this last one this is a resin part that i printed for a tank for some of my tabletop stuff and you can see the uh scan did have a lot of noise i didn't spray this so this is just as is it's a flat gray resin print and the noise cleanup did a really good job uh, but let's go ahead and process this and let's see what happens all right so we're going to click on process it's already been saved so we're just going to click high we're going to apply that and then let it run and this goes through the noise removal which we can do just from the edit tab um, goes to the fusion remove floating parts repair gaps and all these can actually be done from the edit tab one step at a time but this will do it all in one and pop out that extra file for you at the end. And this will take a while. These few scans that I have shown you have been an entire week's worth of free time taken up just for these scans. This takes a lot of time. Processing, saving, once you start getting a ton of point detail, even though I have a computer that's perfect for 4K editing, it does not utilize this computer at all. All right, let's check out this model here. It's not bad. It would be great if you're using it for reference, um, but I would not use this as a replication uh, file. So you can see it has some of that banding in there. You can see those swirls because everything's spinning around that center perfectly. You can see in the back, there's some of those little vents that are just too small to capture all the detail. And this is one of the better skins that I've gotten, but it's still not perfect. So my conclusion is that I would just use these models as reference if you're trying to rebuild something um, or if you need to create like parts that connect onto the part that you're scanning, this would be the way to go. All right, now for the value of this thing. It MSRPs at 179 US dollars. It is on sale right now for 169. Huh? Um, but I don't know if this is something that I would get just because I can use a tripod and the turntable to scan anything that I need. So the only real advantage I see to this thing is if you have a bunch of simple models that you want to scan that you can just real quick stick it onto the little sticky pad and hit scan. But those models would have to all be in like the 30 to 50 millimeter range and not any taller than that. <laughs> so. If you have any small miniatures, it's not going to do that any better than a handheld scanner. And if you have any kind of, I mean, that that's literally it. <laughs> so if you have large dice, you like to scan. 
So if you have like your kids little clay models, which probably won't have a lot of detail that you want to scan, then this would be probably pretty great for that because it's usually, I don't know, your kids make small clay models. But for the miniatures that I have, it wasn't doing great or any better than what a handheld uh, or a tripod would do. So it doesn't have advantage for that. It's really only for like simple 30 to 50 millimeter models that you can stick to that sticky plate. And that's the only advantage I see to this. And I don't know if I would personally spend $179 for this. All right, I had to jump in here just because I thought this was funny. This model that they're scanning is not gonna work for what you want to do. The tail is going outside of the scan range. It's too tall for the scan range. Like this is like, like 60 mils high, 60 mils wide. Like it, this is not gonna be a model you can scan on here. Just had to throw that in there. Thought it was funny. And you can see on this model that it's going through the same thing. It's doing that homing self run. And then you can see the model that they are scanning is very white, very matte. And I think it's actually overexposed. You can actually see the red starting to clip out on that model. And it's, I mean, they're scanning it. You can see they've tilted that, that scanner right over here. You can see it's not in line with the arm because they had to get it on that table. They had to get it in line with that table. I don't know what they're doing on the computer, probably naming it so they can save it. Oh, there they go. Oh, they made a custom profile. Oh, yep. You, you can add. I don't know why they only did halfway up and halfway that way. This is only like half the model and then a full rotation. Interesting. There it goes. Yep. You can see the head is actually starting to clip out. This is like the maximum size this the scanner can do. So this is probably a 50 millimeter tall model and it's missing details at the top. So this is on their video. This is their how to video. Let's see. Let's get the head. Yeah, it's not getting the top at all. It's too close to the scanner. Yep, they're rebuilding it. Yep, you can see the banding in their model too. Wait, wait, go back. What was that? Did they do a coplanar selection? Uh, interesting, we'll have to try that. So they did an edit process. So that way it just did the model and then they're gonna do the model cleanup. So they didn't go through the process button at all. They did the edit functions. So it's one at a time. But yeah, this part you can see it's it's not there. <laughs> the last part of the hair. All right, well, you can see that's from them. That's pretty much, that pretty much sums up the type of models that you can get out of it. So if you are planning on getting this, just make sure that your models that you want to be scanning are fitting into those parameters. Um, Cause those are the models that'll actually turn out sweet. And I think those models you can throw into like a CAD software or Blender and rebuild those models or to build on those models. And yeah. I think if that's the route you wanna go, this, this scanner would be good for that. I'm also putting out some shorts right now and I'm having a lot of fun making those, so go ahead and check those out. All right, that's all I got for you today. I hope that was informative or at least gave you somewhere to start from. I'm gonna do some more tests with it, kind of fine tune what I think are the best settings, um, but I think it's more down to the models and how you prepare them and what size they are. So, all right, that's all I got for you. Later guys.